Is that the Wogan show? Yes. I'd like to speak to somebody in charge, please. Oh, all right, then. Get me anybody. Oh, hello, Terry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ralph Filthy here. Theatrical agent. Who do I represent? Uh, <coughs> uh, sorry, cross line there. Now, listen. Listen, Terry, I'm a big fan. Yes, yes. Love the little looks to camera. Yeah, very sexy. Very come hither. Yeah. Very come hither and screw me to the wall, you whirlwind of sauce, you. No, I mean it. No, Terry, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it, would I? Yeah, now, Terry, look, I've got this book and I was hoping to plug it on your show. Yeah, well... Well, it's more of a manual, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is quite dirty, but uh, it's not tacky. No. No way is it tacky. It's more of a sort of a social service, really. Yeah, going it alone, I did it my way. <laughs> yeah, it's a sort of a single person's guide to sex, really. <laughs> oh. Gloria Honeyford. <laughs> oh, stop sighing, Eddie. I'm not sighing. <sighs> Pardon me, but I think you are sighing. I'm not. I'm idly collecting phlegm at the back of my throat. <laughs> and when I've got enough, I'm going to gob at you. <laughs> Wouldn't blame you if you were sighing, actually. The hours are not exactly charging by at the moment. No work. Nothing to do. Wonder what Tom O'Connor's up to. <laughs> Impost to say, really. The man is such a sparkling, multifaceted genius, <laughs> but one simply cannot predict what amazing thing he'll get up to next. And it's an interesting thing about Tom O'Connor. Well, congratulations, Richie. <coughs> I had thought that today I had plumbed the very depths of tedium, a level of boredom beneath which I could not sink. But no, Richie Rich has started to burble on about Tom O'Connor. <laughs> What shall we do? Stare at the wall or chat about Tom O'Connor? Oh, well, I've got a bit of a weak heart condition. Staring at the wall will probably be too exciting. Probably safest <laughs> if we chat about Tom O'Connor. You don't fancy watching a couple of episodes of Name That Tune on the vid, then? <laughs> oh, no. Telly's broken. <laughs> Tom O'Connor's probably playing golf now. Him and a few of the guys. Probably only just realised that I'm not there. But I thought you were going to ask him, Bob Monkhouse. No, you said you'd do it, Tom. Oh, bother, that's the whole game ruined then. Bob Hope will chip in. Bother, 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 bother. Richie, Richie, please, I'm begging you. No, I'm not, I'm threatening you. <laughs> if you don't shut up, I shall ram your head into the microwave. All right, all right, all right. The subject is closed. <sighs> <sighs> See, Brucey Forsyth's got a new series. <laughs> Spot the catchphrase. Brucey trots out a series of meaningless catchphrases and the celeb panel have to guess which one's going to annoy the general public most. <laughs> Could be very big, Eddie. Richie, do you think we could possibly avoid the subject of Brucey Forsyth as well? I mean, in terms of boredom, it's much the same as talking about Michael Barrymore, really, isn't it? <laughs> what? Eddie, your ignorance really is embarrassing. We're talking about two completely different artistic entities. I mean... They're catchphrases, for example. I mean, what's Bruce's catchphrase? Come on, what's Bruce Forsyth's catchphrase? You know, you know it. Come on, what is it? What is it, Eddie? What is it? It's gonna be a big night tonight <laughs> if you play your cards right. Nice to see you. Give, Give us, us a twirl, twirl and fear. I'm in charge. charge. That's right. And Michael Barrymore's is anything John Cleese ever said. 
accompanied by a couple of rounds of... Oh, 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 oh. Where's the similarity there? Neither of them are funny. I mean, take the game shows they present. On Play Your Cards Right with Brucey, there's a whole line of cards and then you win a prize. Whereas on Strike It Lucky with Michael, there's a whole line of televisions and then you win a prize. I mean, there's just no similarity between the two concepts at all. Really, Eddie, I do think that when important TV execs go to so much trouble to provide us with such varied scheduling, the least you can do is give them some credit. Richie, if you don't shut up, I'm going to cut your head off. Stuff it in the microwave, wait until it goes ping, then take it out, mash it up with a bit of milk and butter and rub it up your backside! So <laughs> shut up! Very well. <laughs> if you wish it, Eddie, we shall sit in silence. It could save your life. <laughs> <sighs> I hear Ted Rogers has been thrown off three, two, one. <laughs> right. Too old to see. <laughs> Too old. He's 108 if he's a day. Got caught short in the ad break and had a whittle in Dusty Bin. <laughs> Dreadful business. Actually, the rumour in the business is that they want me to take it over. Yeah, me. With Sammy Fox as the glamorous bit of totty on the side. Yeah, could be a very special team, I think. <laughs> do you want to touch my body? Yes, we do, Sammy. And what's more, we want to stick our heads up your blouse and go... <laughs> 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 oh, shut up! <laughs> right. Right, Eddie, that's it. No, seriously, this is it. I'm sorry, Eddie, but when they do me on This Is Your Life and you're brought on as my lifelong companion, guess what? I'm not going to recognise you. <laughs> That's right. I'm just going to simply stare blankly and say, who the hell is he? Get him off my programme. He stinks. And all my great showbiz mates, like, like... Marty Kane and Gary Wilmot, they'll all say so too. They'll say, who the hell's a fat, ugly bastard pretending to be Richie's mate? Get him out of the studio, quickly. Yeah, and you'll be so embarrassed, won't you? You'll be so embarrassed, you'll start to cry. <laughs> you'll cry. And we'll all laugh. And then Eamon Andrews will start punching you. And all my great showbiz mates will join in. Clive Dunn, Roy Castle, Paris will all punch you to death in front of millions of people just for being ugly and poor. <laughs> Hello, Richie. Hello, Eddie. Uh, the front door was closed, so I picked the lock. <laughs> uh, do you mind if I use your toilet, Richie? No, of course not, Philby. Go ahead. Ta. Right. Come on in, then, my dears. This way. This way, yeah. This way, Mr and Mrs Elton. Yeah, in there. As promised. One room, bijou, maisonette, running water, fully furnished. Tray boner, ideal for young families' first home. 90 quid a week, cash down, thank you. I'm sure you'll be very happy in your new home. <laughs> Filthy? Well, you said I could use the toilet, Richie. Be fair, I did ask. Yeah, you said you could rent it out. <laughs> I've just moved into the estate agency biz. Tray boner, tray mucho mazula. Uh, Filthy, what happens when we want to go? Well, it's in their rent agreement, Eddie. You have right of passage. Filthy! <laughs> I am not easily embarrassed, as you know, but I think it's going to be jolly difficult to maintain the social niceties we in Britain are so proud of with a young family living in my toilet bowl. <laughs> Eddie, 90 quid. Anyway, they won't mind. This is the 80s. There's nowhere to live. People have to go where they can. Oh, by the way, watch out what you do with your rubbish. I've got a couple of students in your dustbin. <laughs> Not married, I'm afraid, but you can't expect morals from kids these days. <laughs> boys, boys, this is not a day for long faces and whining. This is a day of glad tidings, merriment, joy, happiness. <laughs> because, Richie, my dear, I have found you a job. Oh, my God! <laughs> Well, aren't you pleased to hear? No, I'm not. I remember the job you got me last time. Yeah, so do I. Trade boner. Regular appearances. Extended engagement. Filthy, you told me to sign on the duel. <laughs> took a 75% commission on me unemployment benefit. Yes, 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 never mind all that, Richie, darling. That's all in the past. 
because I have found you a real showbiz job. Filthy, if this is some kind of joke... Then it'll be the first one on the show this week! Shut up, Eddie! <laughs> We've had some super laughs already and the show's only just begun! <laughs> now, Filthy, tell me and tell me true. Have you really, honestly, cross your heart and hope to die, got me a genuine, genuine showbiz job? Yes. <gasps> a big. Enorm. Enorm! You, Mr. Richard Rich. Yes! You old trooper, you. Yes! You old hellraiser, you. Yes! You, you mad drunken dog of the theatre. Ruff, ruff, ruff! <laughs> you are going to read the gossip columns on breakfast television tomorrow morning. Ah! <laughs> oh, my God, this is it! I'm gonna meet Anne Diamond! Wincy Willis! Gordon Honeycomb! This is it! Michelangelo got persisting trouble contracts. Russ Abbott had his madhouse. Vernon Matthews couldn't say beautiful properly. And now I'm going to read the gossip columns on breakfast TV. Just the one afternoon, B. It's only tomorrow morning. Ha! Wait till you see how brilliant I am at it. I'll be reading the weather before you can say frag blah. <laughs> one small prop. <laughs> Bear in mind that you have to be at the studios tomorrow at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you old Joshua. Come on, Philby, this is serious. What time have I got to be at the studio? I'm telling you, boys, that's it. A.M. <laughs> Shut up, Eddie. This is serious. This is my big break. 4.30 in the morning. That's right. <clears throat> so you've got to have a quiet night in, get to bed early, and above all, get up on time to get to the studios on time. Otherwise, you'll become bywords in the business for unprofessional behaviour and never work again. Yeah, right, right, we've got to get an early night. Oh, uh, sounds a bit ominous. It doesn't sound in the slightest bit ominous, Eddie. Now, you just remember to be there tomorrow, 4.30, sober. Sober. If you need me, I'll be down the off-licence until opening time and then down the pub until closing time and then after that at the club. <laughs> See you down the studios. <sighs> T-V-A-M! <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah! Sober. <laughs> right, 4.30 in the morning. What time is it now? It's nearly opening time. Right, only 11 hours to go! <sighs> What's on the telly? <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> Right, now look, we've got to be really, really sensible, Eddie. Yes, and have a quiet evening here. And an early night. As above all, we've got to be up in time to get to the studio. <sighs> Why don't we go out for just one quiet little drinky? <laughs> no. Oh. Mm. <laughs> you know what would happen then, don't you? Lager frenzy. Lager frenzy. <laughs> but one thing you can't do after lager frenzy is get up at 4.30 in the morning. We can exercise restraint. Yes, and back in the real world, perhaps we couldn't. <laughs> I know what we'll do. No. No, not that. No, no, I got far too messy last no, time. No, no, we'll never do it again, I swear. <laughs> never. No, listen, this is great. I nicked myself a school kid on the bus yesterday. It's a great new game, but all the most up-to-the-minute trendsetters are playing at the moment. It's fantastic, and it's called Trivial Pursuits. Richie, Trivial Pursuits was fashionable about five years ago. Oh, you really are a sad creature, aren't you, Eddie? If you can't think of something first, you've just got to run it down. Come on, let's play it. You have to shake the start. Here goes. <clears throat> Five. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Six. Uh, no, no, that's on an angle, isn't it, you see? It's on a little angle, Eddie. You have to roll it again. Six. <laughs> You've played this before, haven't you? <laughs> still, it doesn't matter who starts. I'm still going to thrash you. Right, come on. Right. Politics. <clears throat> Richie, why don't we go out for just one little non-alcoholic drinky? Like what? Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, vodka frenzy is even more destructive than lager frenzy. I don't know, the vom's a lot clearer. <laughs> it's easier to wash out of your sheets. Well, it shouldn't make all that much difference to you anyway. You haven't washed your sheets since 1978. <laughs> and then you only put them in the lab with a bar of soap and flashed it a couple of times. <laughs> now, come on, are we going to play this game or not? Right. Well, ask me that question then. <clears throat> Stop looking. I'm not looking. Yes, you are looking. I'm not. You're looking in that lampshade and then you're seeing it reflected off my eyeballs because they're so sparkling. <laughs> Sounds like a cue for a gag about sparkling balls. <laughs> not if you ever want to work again. <laughs> right, now, come on, let's play and stop cheating. I'm not cheating. I don't need to cheat to beat you. Oh. Well, in that case, perhaps you wouldn't mind turning your back while I read the question. 
All right, then. Great. <laughs> you seem to be taking an awfully long time to read me my question, Richie. Uh, yeah, there's just one or two long, complicated words, Eddie. I'll be with you in a tick. Oh, dear. How oh, very, very sad. Richie, what have we got above our mantelpiece? Eamon Andrews. A mirror. And what do I see reflected in that mirror? Either sharp or brilliant. The pathetic sight of the man who once did the continuity links on TVS reduced to grubby cheating to get the better of his half-drunk mind. And this, if you don't mind my saying so, is Thatcher's Britain. Al Pacino. <laughs> and the Bee Gees. <laughs> oh, uh, <coughs> great, good. Uh, I think all your cards are in ordinary. I think we can start. <laughs> it's of no importance, Richie. I shall simply take the questions from the other end of the box. Now, presuming I can see nothing of interest in your sparkling balls, who uh, are, <laughs> perhaps you would like to read me my question. Right, here goes. The first question of the game. Da 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 da! <laughs> right. <laughs> here goes. <clears throat> Oh, God, this is easy. <laughs> Blimey, this is a bit too easy, actually. No, really, I don't think it's fair. It's so easy. Look, just ask me the question. All right, then. But it's not really fair. I mean, really, really, it's too easy. I mean, it really is too easy, really, isn't it? I mean, it's not fair, really. I mean, you've had all the easy questions and I've had all the really hard questions. I could have won by now if I'd had your questions. I don't think it's fair at all. Really, I mean, honestly, it's just not fair. I mean, in any way, you probably know all the answers by now because you play the game so often. For those of you who have never played Trivial Pursuits, <coughs> the producer wishes me to assure you that this is exactly what it's like and it's actually a brilliantly well-observed gag. Eddie, shut up. Our audience is very sophisticated. They all play Triv. Richard, <laughs> in order to play Triv, you have to be able to read, which I'm afraid counts all that out from the start. Eddie. <laughs> Oh, look, are we going to play this game or not? Well, ask me the bloody question! All right, all right! <clears throat> oh, God, it's so easy. Oh, God. Here it is. <clears throat> Who was the last Labour Prime Minister of Britain? And if you don't get this, you're an idiot. Callaghan. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, uh, can you be a bit more specific? <laughs> James Callaghan. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, <clears throat> can you give me a little bit more? Richie, there is no more. That <laughs> is the answer. Yes, but we have to go by what it says on the card, don't we? <sighs> All right, I'll give up then. Great, my go. <laughs> James Callahan. It says on the card, James Callahan. Yes, it says James Callahan, full stop, doesn't it? <laughs> Callahan, full stop. You see, you have to go by what it says on the card, Eddie. I can't help it. It's just in the rules. It's not my fault if you're too stupid to get the answer right. <laughs> Right, down. Oh, no, great. Show me is a pink category question. Ah, it's my go! <laughs> <laughs> Who was the star and director of the Rocky and Rambo films? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I know this. Now I know this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, don't tell me. I'm not going to. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and don't say you were. Um... What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Who was the star and director of the Rocky and Rambo films? Got it. Tarby. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. The card must be wrong, it's definitely Tarby. <laughs> It's Sylvester Stallone, of course it is. Oh, I knew that one. No, I didn't know yeah, that. Well, you didn't say it. Yeah, but I knew it all the time. Yeah, I mean, well, I knew fair it. enough. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it's my gun. No, but I knew it, didn't I tell you? I knew it all the time. I knew that one. It's still my gun. Richard, <laughs> in about 15 seconds, I'm going to have to punch you in the face. <laughs> and because I'm your minder, I'm going to have to defend you and beat myself up. And that way we're both going to get hurt. Why don't we avoid all this unpleasantness and just go for one teeny weeny only have one eat drinky? Eddie, we're having a lovely quiet night in playing a fantastic game of Triv. <laughs> We've got to be up in time to go to the studios. We can't go for a drink. <sighs> all right, Eddie, I'll let you have your go. <sighs> go on, go on, have it. <laughs> I'll ask you a question and I hope I give you a really hard one and don't say you're there. Who, uh... <clears throat> Geography. Right. <coughs> oh, God, this is so easy! Uh, 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 uh. Right, right. 
<coughs> what, then, what is the world's northernmost capital city? Reykjavik, comma, Iceland, full stop. <laughs> I suppose I'll have to give it you, then. <laughs> Why? Because it's right? Don't gloat, Eddie. It's most unbecoming. Oh, God, this is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to lose, didn't you? Got scared, so you had to throw the board across the room. Go on, ask me a question. Go on, any question. Just ask me. It'll be great. I'll give it right. Go on, I'll bet you a million pounds. Go on, just ask me a question. Go on. Anyway, go on. Just ask me a question. It'll be great. Go on, ask me, ask me, ask me, ask me. <coughs> Which jolly, gap-toothed, scouser comedian who now presents Winner Takes All, first rose to fame on Sunday night at the London Palladium. He enjoys the odd round of golf, and his initials are JT. <laughs> now I know this. <laughs> JT? Um, um, I know it, I do know it, I know it, I know it. Um, got it. Jimmy Tarbuck. What? <laughs> oh, yes, Rob Tarby! Yes, it's Tarby. Great, I got another one right. Ask me again, ask oh, me again. This is pathetic, Richie. You've just landed a contract at TVAM. We should be out celebrating. You're not getting bored to death. Eddie, we've got to be up early so we're bright and fresh for the studio at TVAM. Richie, if we went out for one little drinky, it might help us sleep. Just one. <laughs> Well, I did win the game, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. Very good. Well done, All right, then. Just one little drink. Uh-oh. Lager frenzy! Eddie, look! Paparazzi scum! Tilly voodoo parasites! Voting me! Voting me on my quiet night out when I deserve my privacy like any other human being! Leave my boy Richard alone! Give me that camera! <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> this liberation game's a lark, isn't it, Richie? Right, let's get drunk. Hey, 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 hey. You two are going to have to go before I call the police. I don't tolerate this kind of behaviour in my club, except from celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> my boy Richie is reading the gossip column on breakfast TV tomorrow morning. Is this true? But, of course, small minion, I am, of course, Richie Rich. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want a bench, get us some pop. Hey, everybody, it's Richie Rich. Who? <laughs> Eventually, have a look at those two over there, eh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Eddie, those are potted plants. <laughs> yeah, you don't be really sloshed to fancy them. Right, let's get really sloshed then. Here we are, boys. <laughs> Thank you, landlady. Here's five pence. Oh, Richie, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! I must prefer this club and it's on the way home, really. So we'll just have one little drinking here. And then we'll go straight home to bed. Right. <laughs> well, I must say, of all the clubs we've been to tonight, this is the best. And it's still really on the way home, if you think about it. Yeah, but you have to think pretty stupidly, Andy. I mean, we are in Liverpool now. Right. <laughs> Let's think stupidly about it, then. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, there's an element missing to this evening which no true man should be without. I don't follow you, Eddie. I wouldn't advise anyone to follow me since my bottom resembles nothing more or less than a wind tunnel at the moment. <laughs> What's this element that no true man should be without? Well, we've had a few drinks. We're out for a good time. What's your mind turning to? Of course. Come on, frenzy! Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. oh, blimey. Eddie, loosen my trousers, would you, old girl? Well, why can't you do it? Because you're the nearest. <laughs> All right. Uh, just stand by my tummy. <laughs> anyway, you have to do it anyway, cos I said that you had to do it. And you have to do what I say, don't you? Cos you're the pathetic nobody and I'm the great fantastic person. That's what your life's all about, isn't it, you zero? Richard, have I ever told you the story about the tortoise and the hare? 
Is it a dirty one? Uh, no, that's a story about the tortoise and the donkey. <laughs> oh. Tell me that one, then. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> there was once this really kinky tortoise. <laughs> I'm seriously into m and M&S? Marks and Spencers. <laughs> <laughs> He used to work in the lingerie department. <laughs> and anyway, his supervisor, the donk. <laughs> donk. Donkey. Oh, yeah, right. Used to think he was a really conscientious worker. But really, the tort was coming in early to try on all the bras and try on all the mitts. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd better tell a story about the tortoise and the hare. Well, you mean you haven't got a punchline? Yeah, that too. Anyway, who cares? We've got the cash, haven't we? Yeah, we got the cash. Yeah, right. Well, there was once this tortoise in this hair. And the tortoise was really slow and slothful. And called Richie Rich. Have you got it so far? Look to the moat in thine own eye, is my answer to this. Or rather, look to the four billion fags, eight gallons of lager, and a couple of crinkly old copies of Mayfair in thine own eye. Look, Richie, we're not talking about me, we're talking about you. And, of course, the hare, who is a real whiz-kid go-getter, wise-cracking gangster called Bobby Davro. <laughs> Me and Dav's in a showbiz race. This is fantastic. <laughs> Go on. Well, the hare won totally because Davro's got a bit of talent and the tort got run over by a bus because you're a talentless scumbag and that's why you'll never have your own game show. <laughs> And that's the way you feel, is it? Yep. In which case, it seems rather strange to me that they've asked me to go on breakfast tea in the morning. That reminds me, what time is it? It's 4.15. Right. What time have we got to be there? Uh, 4.30. Right. Where are we? Southampton. <laughs> right, we better be quick, man. We've just got time for one more drink. Right. A double? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Mr Filthy, there's only ten minutes left. I really am becoming very worried. Yes, I know, Anne, my love. I am trying to trace them. I am considering every possibility. Hello, Battersea Dogs Home? <laughs> yeah. Did you pick up a couple of large dogs last night? One wearing a poncy suit and the other with a copy of Health and Efficiency in his back pocket? <laughs> no? Right, we'll sod you then. Look, we're running out of time. The pink goddess has had a heart attack. She's been bending on the for so long. Look, daughter, I'll try and put this as politely as I can. Shut your face, you silly old cow. You should not have to save money on has-beens. Hello, yes, senior service club. Yes, I can hold. <laughs> Hello, yes, do me a favour, would you? Look out the window and see if there's a couple of revolting offences to humanity wiggling their backsides and saying, we'll do anything for half of lager. <laughs> there isn't? Right, we'll sod you then. Right, well, that's it, and my dear. I have tried every conceivable possibility. However, as I said, I do happen to have this manual, which I was hoping I could give a plug on your show instead. Look, Mr Filthy, I've told you before, TVAM is a family programme and we do not broadcast smut. Good morning, Britain! Richie, Rich and Eddie Catlack, what are you doing here? <laughs> Honestly, the one time in my life I want you to let me down and you don't. Really, I lose all my faith in human nature. I really do. Honestly. Well, Felty, you're stressed. You're stressed. We have to be here on time. Which I thought was the one way of guaranteeing you wouldn't be. <laughs> Filthy, I don't know what you're talking about and I'm too drunk to care. This is where I begin my success story. From this small beginning, a showbiz empire will be built. Come on, Eddie. Well, Mr Filthy, I hope you're proud of yourself. Your plan to bring smut to TVAM has failed. We remain a good, clean family programme. You really are as sweet and innocent as you look on the telly, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm lovely. <laughs> good morning, if you've just joined us. Time for a look at this morning's newspapers now. And here's our guest reviewer, Mr Richard Rich. <laughs> Oh, 
In the newspapers. Let's start with John Fagan, the Daily Bastard, shall we? Always do something there. <laughs> Ooh, this looks good. Embarrassing incident with bare bottom in local eatery. <clears throat> Pathetic and forgotten has been Richie Rich showed just how low he. <laughs> I thought his helmet was the toilet. Claimed the has been as a policeman, but uh, Mr. Richard Rich. Oh God, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, what? This, this copper wants a statement. Ah, right. Old copper's a bastard. <laughs> Just tell me what you did earlier this evening, Peter. <laughs> well, it had something to do with our trousers. Exactly what you did. For heaven's sake, we're still alive. We're on air. Don't worry, Anne. We'll just sort this out. You're amongst professionals now. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly did we do last night? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Shall we show it? Yeah, let's show the world. <laughs> 